Hello everybody and welcome to my 14th Microsoft Excel 2013 tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to use formatting uh, and I'm going to be doing formatting over the next few tutorials uh, and I really want to link it into Excel dashboarding a little bit as well uh, because uh, as I went through in the first tutorial I'm splitting them down into we've got th three different types of tutorial uh, we've got our database uh, the, the spreadsheets, we've got our dashboard spreadsheets and then we've got our user interface spreadsheets. Uh, so formatting mainly is used on user interface and your dashboarding. Uh, obviously sometimes you combine all three so you use it across all the three things. Uh, but this, in these examples I'm going to be doing it as a kind of dashboard format. Uh, and by dashboard I just mean a kind of page in Excel or a sheet in Excel that you would share with someone else. Uh, and it's called dashboarding quite a lot um, but anyway let's get started so here I've got an example of a dashboard that I had in my first tutorial uh, and I've also got the same example of it but with formatting on and you see the difference between these two in terms of how professional they look uh, and how easy they are to follow so on here I can see right I've got my title up here so I know what's going on I know I've got my total sales, I've got my average sale value, total sales value, uh, and then I can see the difference between 2014 and 2013, and then I can just see a little breakdown of the customers, um, and then I've got some graphs as well that I can look at and things. So, uh, going back onto our normal one, without the formatting, it becomes quite actually hard very quickly to understand what's going on. You can't really see the, the split between the 2014 and 2013 as well, uh, and everything just looks a little bit lazy and haphazard so there's quite a few different things that you can do with your formatting i'm not going to go through a lot of the basic ones uh other than just breeze through them very quickly uh just because a lot of people will understand them anyway and so i don't want to kind of patronize anyone uh but what i will do is go through some of the more complex uh, and useful uh formatting techniques so first of all we've just got our basic ones so if we just highlight our 2013 increase ones so we've got the ability to make things italic underline bold uh you've got double underline as well if you need it uh, and then we've got the different colors as well so let's just make these a bit of a lighter gray uh, and then i just want to align these ones to the right as well by using my little line here so this is on the home tab on your ribbon and then you've just got these little options here so they're all very useful and then let's just do the same formatting for the 2013 information down here uh, and you start to see very quickly 2013 information now isn't as prominent we see the main 2014 information is a lot more clear and that's what we really want to be looking at and that's what we want to draw the attention to is the 2014 information I'm just going to highlight these cells green and because they're kind of it's good that there's an increase from the last year. I'd probably highlight in red if there was a bad uh, increase. Um, this is something you can do automatically with conditional formatting, which I'll do in a tutorial soon. Um, but for now, you've just got your filling colour over here. We've also, as you look across on the ribbon at the top, we've got this tab up here, the styles tab. So this is really useful and you've got kind of default styles in there. So if we select on the drop down here, uh, uh, and you'll see that we've got loads of different styles that we can be using. Uh, I'm going to be using putting in one of the header styles. So I want to be putting in uh, heading two here. So I'm just going to click on that, and that'll give me a various few different things. It's got some borders in there. It's got some color in there, um, and it, some of them have kind of uh, backgrounds and stuff as well. And in fact, I'm going to use for these good styles, I'm just going to use the good style as well, just to make it a little bit more coherent across the entire spreadsheet if I need to. That's what these styles are good for. Is that they're good for making sure you've got something in your spreadsheet, which means, right, this means this. I'm going to center align all of these because I don't like them not being center aligned. Uh, I'm also just going to go and center align these as well. Uh, and then one of the other things I want to do is just put heading down here and let's do a slightly smaller heading so let's choose heading three uh, and we've got all of the kind of grid lines in the background and this kind of makes it look really messy so one of the things I'll always do is go to view and in your show section you've got a few different options here so grid lines 
I always turn off on any dashboard I do, on any spreadsheet I share with people, unless it's just pure data uh, in a kind of database format, I'll always turn off grid lines uh, and uh, I'll kind of rage at anyone who doesn't uh, because it just looks so much better when you turn off grid lines. You could also turn off headings if you want, which quite often looks like nice and tidy as well and just makes it really clear to people this isn't something for you to change. You haven't got headings now. Back off, don't change my things. Uh, which is what you want from a dashboard. You don't want people messing things around. Uh, and then that's kind of it. Uh, in the coming tutorials, I'm going to go through conditioning formatting and go through the different number formatting um, and also how to add your own styles and things like that. So you can add in your own default styles to use over and over again. Uh, and we'll also go through kind of grouping and hiding cells and things like that and locking down the spreadsheet. So uh, thanks for listening and I hope to catch you in the next tutorial.